Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Mrs. O'Brien reporting for class from my front yard. That's my house. That's my escape pod, which is currently filled with tiny colored plastic balls like that fill up a bounce house. It's become the boys' bounce house pit. Let's not talk about that anymore. Don't ask. Today's article is there is entitled as odd as it may sound even though it doesn't sound right to the ear and it isn't grammatically correct there's which means there is instead of there are there's plenty of fish in the trees from ivan stories of old russia by marcus crouch one not all ivans were silly here is a story of one who had his head on the right way around. Ivan had a wife who could never be kept quiet. Tell her a secret and be sure all her gossips would know it before dinner. For gossips meaning like people that she would gossip to about other people. He did his best to cure her or convince her of her habit, but in vain, like it was all for nothing. Her tongue just went on flapping like washing on a line. One day, Ivan was working in the fields and his spade, like a, like a gardening tool, hit something hard. He felt around with his hands and he felt that he had struck a chest full of gold coins. He took it home and showed it to his wife. Our fortune's made, he said. But we must be very careful. If the master hears about it, he will surely claim the treasure for himself. After all, it was buried on his land. They thought about it carefully, about where they should hide the gold. And the wife said they should dig a hole in the floor. This is what they did. And Ivan smothered or covered and uh, hid the surface so that no signs of the treasure were to be seen. Now, my love, whatever you do, say no word of this to one living soul, said Ivan. If a whisper of this reaches the master's ears, we shall be poor again, and he will have me whipped into the bargain. What? said the tongue. You know, always keep your secrets safe. Ivan knew no such thing. He waited until his wife was fast asleep, and then he got up dug up the gold, and he buried it in the barn under a great heap of dung. Dung is like, you know, poo. Next morning, he said to his wife, tomorrow we must go into the woods and catch a fish. Fish in the woods, she said. I never knew that that's where you could catch them. Why, of course, it's much the best place. And Ivan kept his face very serious indeed. While his wife was at the market, he took some fish that he had caught a day or two earlier, together with a dead hare, meaning a rabbit, and a basket full of stale cakes, you know, like cakes or bread, from the baker. And he can uh, excuse me, he took them into the woods. When he came home, he was empty handed, meaning he left it all out there. And after they had eaten the next morning, Ivan took his wife by the hand and they walked to the woods together. Very soon she found a pike dangling from a tree. A pike is a cr it's a crazy kind of fish in my opinion. Uh, it has four rows of fangs on the top and the bottom. Um, ready? Uh, let's see if you can see it. The lake that's across the street from my house, there are, 
there was a pike in there. I caught it with my fishing pole. It had fangs. Anyways, that's frightening. I thought I'd share that. And next, she found a perch, another kind of a fish, far more friendlier fish, fish that doesn't have fangs, and two roaches, like, I'm assuming, cockroaches. She was even more surprised when she came upon a tree which was growing cakes. So, like, the bread or the cakes were hanging from the tree limbs. Look, husband! Cakes on a tree! Of course, he said. Everybody knows that's where they grow. Now, Ivan went down to the river and he pulled on his line, like his fishing line, like he's, he's fishing. And on the hook, there was a hare, meaning like a rabbit. Except we all know that there's no such thing as fishing in a lake for a rabbit. Goodness me, said the wife. Just fancy. Like, look at that. A rabbit. A hare in the river. Quite a good one, too, said Ivan calmly. Usually, there are only half that size. He unhooked the hair, and he put it in his bag. And then they went home and did his catch. And they ate a good dinner that night. Inferencing, what did they eat? By now, the wife's wagging tongue meant like, you know, if you have a wagging tongue, it means you just talk and gossip. You can't stop talking. It's quiet. She had made sure that all the village, everybody in town, knew about Ivan's treasure. And very soon, the news reached the ears of the master in the big house. He sent for Ivan. Go get Ivan. The man went to the house, and he took his good wife with him. What is this I hear? said the master gravely, like angry. Have you found this treasure on my land and not reported it to me? It's just idle gossip, meaning like it's nothing. There's not a word of truth to it. But your own wife says it's true. Ah, she's a crazy woman, said Ivan. You can never believe a word she says. That's not true, said the wife. You know very well that you brought that treasure home. When was that? Why, it was the day before we caught a fish in the woods. What is this, said the master. Fish! In the woods! Yes, master, said the wife eagerly. And the very same day we picked cakes off of the trees. There were lots of them. Then, on the way home, my man fished a fat hare, or rabbit, out of the river. Take her home, said the master to Ivan. You're right. She is a crazy woman. Still, the master was no fool. He sent his men to the cottage, like a cabin. That's kind of like what a cottage is. When Ivan was out, and they dug up the floor, and they searched high and low, like all over the house. But no treasure could they find. Ivan spent it. Coin by coin in the market and kept them in comfort for many a years.